We'll set up a more complex T intersection with tapers. Uh, we'll begin by constructing two reference elements. Reference elements are elements that will be or we will expect to see in our design file. So here we have a horizontal element that will represent the edge of pavement to the through road and the vertical element will represent the center line to the secondary road. So just like in our basic T, uh, we'll begin by placing a center uh, on top of our reference element and we'll use an intersection snap and we'll fully constrain the element by length and we'll set the length to 325 to start. Okay. Uh, now this cell, um, because we'll be using tapers and we'll be working with quadrants in an intersection, um, to do this, we don't want to base our arcs off of the references. And the reason is because the references directions will always vary in our designs. So with that varying direction, in other words, was our alignment created from the east to west, west to east, north to south, uh, south to north, uh, this will affect the positioning of our fillets that we'll be placing. So what we need is a constant and the way we get a constant is to put our seam in at this time. So we'll come in here and we'll use a feature. We'll just call this seam right and again we'll select and we'll use the intersection snap and I'm trying to intersect snap to the reference elements and I'll define the distance by length and I'll set the length to 250 feet and this is just an arbitrary distance and we'll uh, trim and extend using our microstation commands in just a minute uh, and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side so now you see we have uh, two seams put in place. Now it's critical when we place our fillets at this point that we use these elements both the center line and the seam lines to place our fillets. We want to be certain not to select the reference lines. So we'll come in and we'll use the arc between elements and what we want to do is we want to uh, set a back taper and then a head taper and we're going to use the ratio offset. So uh, this actually was a trick shown to me by uh, Keith Parker at Mississippi DOT to put the ratio offset in, uh, however not specify an offset. So we're going to set the offset to zero but we'll leave the ratio at whatever we need. So in this case I'll just leave it at 1 to 10. And what this will do is it will allow our arc or our fillet as we place it not to be tangential to the alignments but rather to the tapers that were, that are set to a 1 to 10 ratio. So uh, I'm going to try to always maintain my back selection along the secondary road and I'll key in an offset of some uh, 20 feet. This will allow for a 12 foot lane width and an 8 foot offset for my fillet. And then uh, ahead here on the seam, again let's just double check that we get the center line 20 feet and the seam line and we want to be uh, 6 foot. So let's just say 6 feet off of our seam and we'll data point and then we want a uh, curb return uh, of 125 feet. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, selecting the center line and the seam with 125 feet. Now there, there are some uh, methods that we can put in place to actually parallel these two positions. Um, however, I want to keep this as simple as I can at this time. Uh, the next thing I want to do is set an edge of pavement back. And so I'll use the single offset um, 
I guess I'll just say partial and I'll use the road edge of pavement and I'll select my center line and I'll put on a key point snap and let's try this again here and I want an offset of 12 feet key point snap and then instead of a distance we want a key point snap to the end and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Notice I didn't mirror and that's because I want the uh, edges of pavement to basically be independent depending on the side of the roadway. Okay, So we can test out um, this by changing the length here to say 300 feet and we'll see uh, we get that back. Now what this did by placing this fillet with the ratio in place is again it made it so when we add our fillets at this point um, or rather our tapers that this curve is tangential. Now the ability is here to place a taper on the end of the curb but it will just put a straight taper in place and in this case we want our taper to follow the road. So if our alignment is on an arc, our taper will be on an arc, both on the secondary road and the primary road. When placing the tapers, it's going to be critical that we also reference the seam line for the same reason as when we place the arc. Uh, because we're working in specific quadrants, we're going to need to have um, basically elements in place that are consistent. And so we do that by, uh, let's show that real quick, selecting not the reference line, but the seam, snapping it to our arc, and then using the arrow keys, we can constrain the length to a, a specific length. Let's say no. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Again, not the reference line, but we want to right click and be sure we grab the seam snap it and change the ratio and I guess that's 1 to 10 and again we can see the length is locked and then go in and trim to the intersection and this time I'm going to go off of my offset element And I want a ratio of 1 to 10. And we can come down in here and we can verify uh, our snaps and that our length is defined. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. And last, I'll we'll have to flip that around. And now we can go back and trim these elements up. So we use the microstation, trim to intersection command. And this will give us our two dimensional T. Um, now at this time we may want to come in and test the parametrics and be certain we can move it and we'll see the ratio uh, now some agencies may require the same length arc and to do this we would uh, perhaps come in here and grab our through point and slide it back So you see the through point is locked. If we hit end, we can then have control to slide this back to a, another position, maybe even if we had an element out here to lock in on and release it. But you see how it will move with 
the uh, all the elements are constrained together. So I'm going to use a couple undos and get this set right back where we were. And at this point, uh, we can now draw in any islands that we want and move to our 3D portion of the cell.